Hey guys, what's up? Today, day four of 30 tricks in 30 days. Today we're gonna to talk about kendama juggle. Now, juggle as a trick in kendama is a little bit divisive. It's a little bit, it's been a very disruptive trick over the years. I think later in the month, I'll spend an entire video just talking about the disruptive nature of juggle and why I think so many kind of pros and older veteran players have a problem with it. They say it's one thing, but I think there's actually more to it. So anyway, I'll go into that in another video. But for this video, I'm going to talk about my own experience with juggling so far, maybe give you some of my ideas and theory about juggling. This is not a tutorial on juggling because I'm not good enough yet to give you a tutorial on juggling, but I will share what I know and I will kind of explain a theory that I have on how to learn the elusive multiple juggle and juggle to spike. First off, if you're learning juggle for the first time, I think there's a couple key things you need to take into account and do. Juggling for kendama is very interesting because uh, it's called a juggle because it, you are juggling the tama and the ken like you would juggle two balls in one hand. It's a, it's a, it's a juggling technique that's that's made its way over into to kendama now just because you can juggle balls clubs whatever just because you can juggle does not mean you're going to be good at juggling kendama or that you can even do it at all because with a kendama you have a string and the shape of this and the size of these is very different than just juggling balls or normal juggling clubs however before you start juggling kendama, I think you should be comfortable juggling two balls in one hand. And you should be able to comfortable, you should be comfortable juggling two balls in one hand for a long period of time. You should be pretty consistent with it. You need to make sure you're juggling them in columns, meaning side by side, not in a circle. Um, side by side, left and right. Um, I think you some people juggle kendama around in a circle, but I don't think that's probably going to allow you to do multiple juggles later down the line you're going to have more string tangles learn to juggle in one hand if you don't have that basics down first with balls you're probably setting yourself up for a lot of frustration with kendama i'm sure you can learn it it's just going to be a lot harder once you're okay with that there's two schools of thought one is you learn to juggle a kendama stringless the other is you you make sure you leave the string on because if you learn stringless you're handicapping yourself i think you can do either way when I first learned juggle within my first month of playing kendama, I did stringless for a little bit and then I moved over to the string. The string certainly is one of the biggest hurdles to juggling. You definitely, when you're trying, don't, don't try to juggle with a two finger length string. Again, you can do it. Some people can do it really well and it's super impressive. But again, you're setting yourself up for a lot of frustration by not using a longer string. So I would use at least a three finger string, maybe three and a half to four finger string to learn. Now, if, if you are really against a longer string length, learn it and then go back. And then you should be able to hone it in a little better with a shorter string later down the line. Now for juggling, when you first learn, you're gonna learn juggle to big cup. After that though, everybody wants to learn juggle to spike. Here's my theory. My theory is that in order to learn juggle well, you need to skip learning juggle to spike. You can go ahead and learn juggle to big cup, juggle to lighthouse, juggle to some other things, but don't try to attempt juggle to spike over and over again like I have, because I feel like it's just going to be, like whenever I hit juggle to spike, it's after many attempts, there's some luck involved and I'm not consistent. What I think you should do instead of learning juggle to spike is concentrate on learning multiple juggles. That is, just try to juggle as many times as you can. Eventually, people who are good at juggling can just juggle forever, right? Just like you could with balls. 
If you can do that with kendama, I feel like you will be able to learn the control and you'll be able to, you know, when you're when you're juggling in kendama, sometimes it becomes very frantic very easily. For me, I can do a single juggle without a problem. Once you add two or three juggles, it becomes frantic and I lose control. But if you can remain in control while you're doing multiple juggles, I feel like you'll be able to learn to control the tama well enough to get juggle to spike a lot easier. So my theory is to learn juggle to spike and multiple juggles, you focus on multiple juggles. Focus on multiple juggles. Do whatever you can to practice working away from one to two to three, and I think that's gonna get you there. Now, I haven't done this yet. I haven't focused like each day. The other big piece of learning juggling is unless it comes naturally to you, you're gonna have to practice it a lot. So I haven't really executed on my theory yet, but if I can, I'll, I'm gonna try to focus on doing multiple juggles a little more often to see if that'll help me learn juggle to spike. If you notice these pros who juggle really well, they can juggle to spike every time. It's very consistent. They can do multiple juggles to spike. They even use juggle as a recovery tool to get out of other tricks and make sure that they are solid at the end. Anyway, today I, d I did some juggling practice and just saw what I could do. Sorry that I've been talking so much, but I think, it's I think juggle is a super interesting trick. And like I said, I'll probably make another video on juggling later this month as well. But for now, thanks for watching. There's a few more tricks here at the end on what I've been working on today. Just some basic juggle tricks and juggle related tricks. Stick around for those clips and uh, remember to cut the noise and keep it clean. And I will see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.